Hello and welcome to the chapter 1 to 4 or the prologue to chapter to chapter 4. So five chapters all in all. We're going to take this five chapters at a time and do a proper summary. Again, I've tried to include every single detail that is in the book. I've left nothing else. You can use this as your primary resource for studying this book. Okay, so listen in the class when your teacher reads, but then use these videos. You can come back to them. This one is free, um, but later on they'll start costing a little bit. But for now, it's still still free. So please share with your friends. Put it on your WhatsApp status so lots of people can see it, so all your mates can see it, or your class WhatsApp group. If you don't mind, that really really helps me out and helps me to keep going, and I'll do my best to help you out. Cool. So we start with the Brulich. It's called reboot. That's a computer term, obviously, um, when you uh, what restart your computer. And it starts again, like just like it started in Unerwerl, the first book, which we now have a good understanding of. And you'll see now why we had to go through it, because a lot of it is uh, the information kind of spills over and forms a foundation for uh, for this um, for this book. Cool. So again, now we find Zander, and that is Eckhart's real name. And by the way, I'm so sorry for spelling Eckhart in ten different ways in the previous video. That the word just just the, the something about the E K E K C and then the D T just uh, triggered my dyslexia and it went uh, pear shaped. But I fixed it in the document, so I'm sorry about that. So uh, Zander, and also another thing. Donker verb is two words. I thought it was one word. It makes sense to me that it should be one word. It's two words. Um, and I think I've spelled, misspelled that once or twice. So just careful of those little things. Um, but yeah, I'm also just a human making mistakes. We, f we start off with Zander. Okay, Eckhart. So now Eckhart's out the picture. Thank goodness I don't have to spell his name anymore. Where again, he's in his dad's study. Um, and where he found his dad six months ago um, where he wanted to commit suicide with a with a pistol okay with the nine mil there if you can remember he was considering uh, suicide and he still remembers that yellow envelope there was something important about that yellow envelope and then obviously the pistol and there was also a book out of place I'm not sure what that is. I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. Um, in the study, is a book out of place. Maybe your teacher's shop, and you can pick it up, or you can pick it up. Uh, let me know, please, in the comments, because I, I, I somehow I missed it. I don't know why. What's the significance of the book that was out of the shelf? Maybe that's where the gun is stored or something. I don't know. But um, he was 11. It's now six months later. He's 12. Again, he finds his dad in the study. His dad doesn't want to commit suicide now. That was six months ago. And we learn his Rachtenam, his real name. I highlighted important vocab, translated important vocab. Let me know in the comments if it's if it's fine like that, or if I can make changes in future videos. Um, Zander he calls his he comes to the study this time to call his dad because there are two men at the door. There are two visitors. Um, they want to talk to his dad. Now, his dad gets visitors, right? Um, normally, they wear uh, ties and suits. And this time, they are wearing jeans and TM, jeans and like T-shirts. Okay. So, his dad is immediately like nervous, like, what's going on here? Who are these people? Rechter Gierke remembers his name. A skirk, he gets a fright. And especially when uh, Zander mentions that the one guy said his name is Doc, Doc something, Doc something, obviously Doc Pinar, his dad is like, oh my goodness, uh, he immediately warns Greg, get out the house, this is dangerous, these guys are coming to get me, this is obviously why he's been so depressed, so scared, um, he's got himself into this horrible situation where he has to run from uh, the butcher, um, you know, uh, Doc Pinar. Then uh, Zander is in the house, he makes way, he hides, he hears his mother screaming, he hears a face-o, um, a fist impact, 
and a nichang in the passage there. He has a fist impact, and then they take away, they abduct uh, Zander's dad, the 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 um the judge. Okay. Wolfstick Ian is entitled Skria. And it, it begins with like a current upskrift um, from Turret Media. Now, Turret Media is like a media um, umbrella company, much like News24, I would say. Uh, so they, I mean, News24 pretty much drives South African news. It's like that. It, it uh, leads our thinking. It determines our thinking to a large extent. It says, Greg Owen is dead. They found his... his his dead body, they retrieved it, eight gehal, retrieved, from Canal Grande in Venetia, in Italy. Okay. Greg, now this is jumping forward, way forward in the book. Okay. And then it comes back and tells the story from the beginning. So Greg was in Venetia, and it was a Venice, eh? And they did take out a body, Iman Selak, somebody's body. The media reported that it was Greg's body. Obviously, there's a twist. Okay, he was with five other people. All right, what happened to these people? We'll see in about open 60 chapters time. <laughs> there are 68 chapters, I think. This is the first five, so good luck, Matrix. Um, and so now we jump back to how we came to this point. Um, all right, back to uh, the present. Greg's, uh, um, I'm going to see that I'm recording, yes. Greg's, uh, so hey, so okay, they live in, in Joburg, Sandhurst. It's for a lot, it's very quiet, it's very dead after everything that's happened. Obviously, there's this dark, depressing cloud hanging over the whole family after Greg exposed his dad as a criminal. Uh, very tense, very awkward time. He had to leave, and we didn't find that out, I don't think, in the first book. I might be wrong. Uh, in the middle of a trick, he had to leave Lawson College. And now he's he's back in, in, in Joburg. And this is now a year and a half later. Okay. So he left in the middle of the year, it was end of that year would have been December. Now it's like um, almost at the end of the year again, I think, roughly. They don't really say, okay? So it's about a year and a half. Um, they say that most of, obviously during the, the, court, the court cases take a long time. This was a complex uh, court case, complex pro, pro, process. Much of Greg's dad's business contacts, his friends, you, when you're in trouble, you lose, all, you lose all your friends. Interestingly, there was one guy that brought flowers to the house and offered like uh, condolences and whatever and said, sorry, can't say anything I can do for you. And that was Thomas Lawson. That is the original, uh, the owner of Lawson College, the original principal. Then it was um, Doc Binar. Doc Binar is gone. Now Thomas Lawson is principal again. He came to the house during the court case. And it, well, remember, it's, it's the grandfather, the Opa, the Opa of um, TJ, one of Greg's friends. TJ, the friend that betrayed him. We'll talk about that later. Um, Greg decides he wants, he's been at home, there's been this court case, it's over. His dad's in jail. He wants to make a new beginning and mark now alles wat gebeur het, everything that happens. He wants to go to Stellenbosch, far away to study. Um, I think he's going to study sport science or something like that, sport psychology. Um, just slipped my mind for now. Um, I added this point. I don't know. I left it out first. I just added it. Anyway, he, he looks at this painting. In his room, the Konrad Burtis painting, The Temptation to Exist. Kind of a, a very hardcore kind of painting. Uh, I suppose it, it's, it speaks to Greg's existentialist problems that he has, you know. So he's, 
he's, he's in a very vulnerable, weird place in his life, obviously lots to deal with. And this painting helps him. And you'll see that just before he leaves, he packs the painting. Gregor's no hartseer, very sad, feels quite responsible that his dad's still in jail. Okay, he dreams about it, he thinks about it all the time. Um, and then, this is another day before he leaves to Stellenbosch, he goes into John's room, his dead brother's room, where he committed suicide, and everything is still as it is, all his stuff still packed out, quite like neatly packed out, quite awkward. It's almost like an altar of after his death. I think that's the comment that was made by the narrator in the book. What kind of person was John? We learn more about John. Yeah, he was avontierlistig. He was adventurous type. Um, he always tested boundaries, right? Um, for example, bungee jumping off the, the roof of a... Uh, um, of the stadium stadiums you know how they do in durban they obviously do it in other places i think as well where you jump off the top and you kind of bungee jump and hang on a on a harness and a elastic they did that together and um greg said to him why are you doing this like what's the throw he says it's very fall very fries very fall very fries uh, i put that in because that's kind of like a nice little saying um they might use that in a question so I threw that in there. It's ironic that um, John died of pills, something like innocuous, something like innocent, innocent. We know pills are not innocent. Okay. Hectic stuff, uh, especially with fentanyl and that, that sort of thing. We, I don't, we don't know what kind of pills it was. Um, something on school, though, something innocent like pills took his life. Um, Oxycodone, codone, and those, those sort of things. Uh, I don't know what he overdosed on. Could have been sleeping tablets, I suppose. Um, then, when he's in his, when he's in John's room, there his mom finds him. Okay, they sit there, they talk about, they reminisce about John and the dink Um She says to him, you know, Greg, you were always the calmer one. Um, John was always the outgoing, eccentric. It, uh, adrenaline seeking kind of personality okay um john's mom and this is where the title links in screer scream okay she she says to to greg that sometimes when everybody's left cleaners and whatever that she would close the doors dear and fences the doors and windows and she would just scream just this primal angry scream they are said refers to the title why out of food anger row is sorrow heart sear heartache um and then jo uh, john not john sorry this is a mistake um greg were say mob and on she he hears his mom screaming inside him okay so uh, really emotional moment there for track so for track means to depart okay for track so where's he going he's going to stand bosch they've got money right so he just bought a new bmw sport model there uh i don't know what it looks like but it sounds fancy and expensive this is he's using this to drive down to stand bosch from Joburg. um even though greg's dad is in prison he had money tied up in in um, bonds and things and it was safe and so the family could use it right um he, as he goes he takes this painting that's why i put, put that information in he, he's taking that painting with him and then he will i name a photo from john's gezicht in a geraamde photo there's a framed photo there in the um in the entrance of the house and he quickly takes his phone and takes a takes a photo um, his mom asks him, why are you leaving, Greg? And he used the same words that John used when, when he was asked why he's jumping off, bungee jumping. Fairly fall, fairly fret. For the fall, for the fear of it, for the thrill of it, in other ways. In other words. Now, Hoofstuck 2 becomes kind of a recap of On a Varald. Okay, so if you only read this book, you, you have to make do with this short little... Um, 
section of what happens here. He thinks back, Eckhart, did I spell it right? Yeah. Eckhart Seferat, his betrayal, his social manipulatie, social manipulatie. Uh, I think we're going to write what for doing it, but the judge that disappeared, we know, okay, it's Sanders dead and he's dead. Okay. P.S. No, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a, uh, I'm going to do it anyway. There's a video of the, of the judge, of the dad being murdered, okay, shot. Um, he knows his dad was involved with the umkwapere, with the bribery of the judge and his disappearance. They panicked. They're like, oh, this guy's going to spill. He's going to snitch on us and give up everything. Um, he also thinks back on Project Nursery Rhyme, the whole story with the virus. We've covered this. The day, uh, and this is, becomes clearer, this point here, the, the day that they came back from Clarence, that's where he saw um, Eckhart, remember? So he saw Zander. Um, he remembers this day, his dad was phoning procureurs, lawyers. Sorry, I should have put that in. Phoning lawyers didn't really speak to each other. They were angry with each other. It was chaos. It was stress because they knew what's coming. Geweet wat kom. They knew what's coming. Hof soccer, uh, legal cases, and and probably jail. Drunk for for Greg's dad. Greg thinks back on his last day at Lawson College when he's packing his stuff. Interesting that Thomas Jean Lawson, okay, remember that's the old guy, that's TJ's grandfather, who's now the principal, he was also the founder of Lawson College, um, wanted to see them, which is interesting, I don't know why he would do this, okay, um, he has this icy blue eyes, the thin lips and this tight old man's skin, looks like he's his skin is quite thin. It looks like he had a kind of facelift or some work done. Probably had. And um, the secretary says you, to, to Greg's mom, you can join them. They just, they just want to talk. He wants to talk to you. And he says, like, Chris Owen. I think this is the first time we get his first name. I might be mistaken, but I think this is the first time we get Greg's dad's name. Um, I might be wrong. And they said... Yes, my cat scratched me. The, um, okay, so he said that he couldn't protect. He, I couldn't only be scared. He also wanted to um, keep contact for businesses. And Greg's mom and Greg was like, no, man, just, just bugger off. This is not cool. We don't want to talk about business and stuff now. This is crazy. We just want to get out of here and end this chapter in our lives. Um, and they just don't react friendly at all. On his way out, he sees TJ, the, the, the grandchild, also his so-called friend. He thought that he thought they were friends. And he was the one that told the police, Greg is a hacker. Greg is a hacker. Um, he's a keeper cracker. So he snitched on him. That was the guy. Then he meets Cornelia. Now, Cornelia, I don't talk too much about him in the previous video. He's the deputy boy. He also came to greet uh, Greg. He covered a lot for Greg. When the wheel came, wheels came off for Greg as a head boy and he was missing his duties and his marks were dropping and missing rugby games, Cornelia was always, always the guy to kind of step in, step up. He was eindelijk. He ate on Biscara, okay, he protected him. He was actually the, the best candidate for head boy. The last person he sees as he's going out is Plank. Okay, now Plank plays a big role in this, in this book. Uh, we don't know it. That, yeah, we don't really even suspect it. Um, he comes to greet him and he's like, oh, I didn't see you when you left. Where were you? And Greg said, yeah, I came to look for you, but you were not here. Uh, Plank was away at the, the, the uh, horse, uh, while the horses by the stalls, and he was smoking weed there. So that's why he missed Greg the first time when he left. Um, Greg explains that he's going to finish um, his matric with taste honor, homeschooling. And Plank says to Greg that he is going to Marty's. 
And obviously, so now they're going to meet up. So because Greg's always also going to go there. But okay. So now we're back at the present. This was a while ago when he left. It's a year and a half ago. Okay, when he left Lawson College. Back in the present. Greg gaan now meer as a half and a year and a half later Matis to as a first year. Plank will be third year. He'll be second year already. But it won't matter. The Plank's the kind of guy once you're his friend, you're his friend for life. Uh, Greg think, again he thinks about the court case, he thinks, thinks about his dad and Doc Pino. Now here uh, he also remembers an interesting thing that we just have to keep in mind. He remembers during the court case there was a strange suspicious woman that he saw in the court. She had black hair dark, donker bril, dark glasses, a string mont, like a stern mouth. And she was only there for one day of the court case. Remember, this court case lasted for months. And she was in the public gallery. So she wasn't like immediate family or friends. Okay. Welcome in Marty Lunt. Marty Smarties is, of course, Stelis the Stellenbosch. Um, and he's driving down somewhere. On the road, it doesn't say where, I don't think. A woman in, in a BB b recognizes Greg. You're like, hey, you're this guy, you're the guy, that big story, you, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. You exposed your father. Like, why aren't you exposing the, the baker? Everybody wants to know how the baker got away with everything. Okay. Um, is he going to make him known? Is he going to catch him out? Uh, this was a big story in the U magazine, <laughs> all over the newspapers. So everybody knows the whole story. The whole country knows the story. It was a big countrywide debacle. Okay. Um, Greg Kornbeck's a still on. Eventually arrives in his flat. Okay. In his fancy flat, by the way. Um, and he meets here, he meets Chloe, Adams, Kiana and Liz Marie. Chloe is the main main girl there. She's in charge. She's the leader. And she, Greg is an attractive guy. So these girls are immediately like flirting with him. Flan, flankier is the word. Um, double E. And so they flirt with him. She's like, oh, you're my boyfriend. And Greg's not interested at all. He's focused on other things. His flat is fully furnished. Fully furnished, just learn that with new stuff, flat screen TVs, fancy kitchen stuff. I uh, remember that the I said that the trust geld was veilig, the trust money was safe, even though Greg's dad went to jail. Okay, then his mate comes, plank klop on die haven't seen each other in a year and a half, they're very happy to see each other. He asks Greg about Nicole. Greg said, no, nah, they broke up, let uitgemaak, she just used him, and she also quite liked Eckhart when they went away on a holiday um, at some point, and yeah, so those, that thing is is over. Um, chapter 4, last one for this video. Die loser wat sy pa weggegeet. This is what people keep saying about his back. That is kind of Greg's reputation. He's the loser that gave up his dad. That betrayed his dad. That snitched on his dad. Um, okay, so Chloe, it starts, this girl's quite annoying. Wakes up, uh, can't spell, friend dinner. Um, and they wake him up early in the morning. One morning, this is the initiation week. Okay, for the first year, and they um, noy um, noy is invited eh, to the oefening, the practice, the rehearsal of fensters. The fensters is like a, a, a here we go. I say it yeah, the music, dance, and drama opvoering in the start theater. Um, all the courses, the courses, all the boarding establishments come together, and they have this, this, this. Um, this act, this performance, sorry, in the state theater, and they all work together and they paint stuff. Um, even Greg's help, they help Faf, he helps to paint. He almost starts to enjoy himself like he's normal, like he can fit in, 
like these people are not constantly uh, judging him and reminding him of his um, reputation. Uh, Planck is in the course says Volgenov, well known in Stellenbosch, and he's got a few mates there. And they go and visit Greg one Friday afternoon. They still give each other the Lawson handshake, which shows us that the bond between Greg and, and Planck is actually quite deep. Planck is a, a beautiful character. He's like one of those, like such a fun guy, such a loyal guy, so chilled. Okay. Um, then when they arrive there, Planck's like talking to Greg and he says, listen, th that woman over there with the hat, the sunglasses, uh, she was staring and she's staring at Greg. She says, there was, she was asking questions about you. She says, Frau, were you gefragt, Greg? And Greg's like, ah, she's probably a journalist. He's kind of used to the attention. Journalists always hunting him down, always wanting to talk. Okay. Uh, it's the second time now we've read about this. We don't know if it's the same woman yet. Okay. In the courthouse and now here watching him at his um, flat. Okay. Okay, now it's Friday evening, and it's Friday evening in Stellenbosch. It's full Lieve. I'm all partake. There's, there's a big parties. Greg realizes that he I sickle. Sickle is struggle. He struggles to enjoy himself. He just can't like immerse himself into this university party culture. He's a bit of an outsider. He doesn't you know, doesn't feel like he belongs. Okay. But he's there, he's like trying. And then in the mass, and then to make things worse, in that mass of people, morsh, someone messes beer on Greg's shirt. This kind of thing happens, okay? Uh, spills beer on his shirt. And he looks at Greg, and again he gets recognizes. And he says, hey, you, and this guy's drunk, okay? You're the loser that gave away your father, we saw you. He says, oh yeah, I remember you, my girlfriend was looking at your pictures in the You magazine, the Heisgenet. She had this big crush on you. It's definitely you. Um, and he, again, he gets asked this question. Are you going to catch the baker? You caught your father, you caught Doc Pinar. Why are you not uh, catching your father? And there, right there, Greg realizes that he will always be Debate is done. He'll never quite fit in. And it's this re repeated bombardment, people reminding him of his old life, what happened, the part, the pain of the past, and the fact that the baker is now becoming an issue. It's the baker is, is, is still out there. He has not been brought to justice. Okay. So that is the first video. I hope that helps. Please share it. Okay. Um, it covers all the content. I will somehow make this book available, um, maybe at, maybe on Patreon, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I'll, I'll think of a way how we can get it to you um, and then really hope that helps. Cool. Signing off. Hope you're having a good January. We will chat soon. Where's my thing? Yeah, we'll chat soon. Okay. Bye.